Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Popper Ponderings. Sorry about no intro video, I got something really special planned for next week in terms of my story and how I'm dealing with Emrakul and, and whatever else, but we'll leave that to the next week. This week, I want to again congratulate Mr. Oregon for winning the Popper print. Now, this week, I have a brand new contest, and I know a couple weeks ago I talked about how... I went to a tournament and the winner got a foil invocation counterspell. And uh, I wasn't able to win, unfortunately, but I've picked one up. Here it is right here. And I would like to give it to one of you. So, please comment down below anything you want, essentially, for this week and next week and on my stream. And uh, you'll be entered in to win it to, uh, for a chance to win this invocation counterspell. So, make sure you do that. Again, thanks for watching. Also, before we get started, go Jets. They just won. I just finished watching. It was the greatest game I've ever seen. If you're not a hockey fan, NHL playoffs are a great way to get started into watching the greatest sport on earth. Anyways, finally, my stream is going to be going live tomorrow night, 7 p.m. until 10 p.m., and then Sunday, 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. So if you go to this link right here, www.twitch.tv slash popperponderings, I will be going live at 7 p.m. tomorrow on Friday, Central Standard Time. So make sure you check that out. We'll probably be playing some of this deck, Tempered Steel, maybe some of that um, Cheerios deck that I played last week, but uh, make sure you head on over there. It'll be pretty sweet. You just have a good time. So without further ado, let's get into some Tempered Steel. Hey guys, alright, so welcome to this week's episode of Popper Ponderings. We're playing some mono white tempered steel, or just tempered steel and popper. So this deck is, is was sent to me by my buddy John, and uh, I actually think it's quite neat. It's a mono white affinity deck with, um, I guess he calls it, it's a little bit more mid-rangey and uh, a little bit more threat dense. So if you want to go through the cards, our one drops are four Arden Recruit, which is one white for a three, for a one one. And if you have Metalcraft, it gets plus two plus two. We have four copies of Court Homunculus, which gets plus one plus one if you have another artifact. We have four copies of Thurwind Inspector. This card is just bonkers and popper. It's just so good at clogging up the ground, you know, filtering through your deck. Then we have four copies of Bone Splitter, one of the best cards in the format. Four copies of Flare Husk, a pretty big standard in Affinity. And then four copies of Spring Leaf Drum. Again, just a busted card. The ability to turn all of your creatures into Mana Elves is so good. And decks like these really, really put this card into use and, and make it so, so broken. We then have four copies of Oriac Sun Chaser. It's one and white for a 1-1, one, one, and it has it gets plus two, plus two, and flying if you have Metalcraft. And then four copies of Squadron Hawk, because it's basically the best Bone Splitter holder in the entire format. Four copies of Porcelain Legionnaire. Just a two mana, three, one artifact. First strike, pretty good. Four copies of Frogmite, because it is an affinity deck, and four copies of Mern Forcer. So as you can see, this deck actually plays no removal. We're actually really into just kind of race our opponent and not really worry. And this deck races better than almost any deck I've ever seen. You're able to, you know, put a Bone Splitter on an Oryx Sun Chaser. You're attacking with a 5-3 Flyer. Um, the Portion of Legionnaire attacks very fast. The Squadron Hawk. And then even just a bunch of these 1-drops. This deck is explosive. And it's it almost makes it so that the regular affinity deck actually can't hold a candle to what this deck can do, and I've been very impressed through the first couple games that I've played with it. Over in the sideboard, we have one copy of Relic of Progenitus, which is kind of awkward just having the one. One copy of Circle Protection Green, one copy of Circle Protection Red, 7th edition arts, because, you know. One copy of Obsidian Acolyte, four copies of Standard Bear, one copy of Holy Light, four copies of Prismatic Strands, one copy of Palace Sentinels, and one copy of Battle Screech. So if we want to go a little grinder, we can go a little grinder. We have some, I guess, key sideboard cards. But I'm really excited to play this deck. I've actually done fairly well with it in my testing before this uh, these three rounds. So I'm excited to see where this deck goes. And uh, if you actually don't think I want to make any changes, I think this deck is pretty close to being almost perfect. The only issue I have is maybe some Journey to Nowhere somewhere. I know last week I've tinkered, tinkered around with decks. I actually think this main deck is as close to good as you can get. Maybe you have some comments, some suggestions down in the comments. That would be fantastic. But I don't think you want the Journeys. The Journeys always seemed a little slow. I tried them before I played these games the sideboard is not the biggest best spot for journey to nowhere i never really felt like i wanted it that badly but um you could definitely make the case to maybe cut a prismatic strands and you know cut a standard bear and maybe cut something else for some some journey to nowheres but let's get right into the games guys all right guys we're here for round number one this hand's actually pretty good we have court homunculus with a flare husk yeah this hand is is basically a snap keep 
So we're going to keep it. And we'll see what our Pierre SP is on. Elves? Oh, it looks like Boggles. Okay, so we have some sideboard for this uh, for this matchup, so that's good. Alright, so we're going to lead on. I think just Court Homunculus. Just get the beats going as fast as possible here. We'll have some decisions next turn, but... Uh, Solana Ledgewalker, yep. Okay, so, player land. Frogmite costs one mana. Play Springleaf Drum. It'll be free. Now, we can either play the Sun Chaser. Two, three, four, five artifacts. We can play Flare Husk. Plus Mur Enforcer. Or we can just play... The Sun Chaser the Legionnaire. I think it makes... This is just more power, so I think it makes more sense to do that. Um, so, go ahead and attack. Get in for two. You can see we still have the aggressive draws that the normal affinity decks have. I just think we're a little bit more... I guess I do want to say resilient. Not resilient. I guess we're a little more consistent, maybe. And yeah, we're done. That was a pretty good turn, too, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> so we're going to put... We have a lot of pressure on our opponent now. Call me Garden, sure. What does our opponent have? He has Cartouche of Solidarity, and he gets in for two, sure. Okay. Draw planes. That doesn't really do very much. We are going to go ahead and rumble, though. Um, I guess we leave back the germ, because we can play both of our threats, so that's fine. Get in for eight. Blocks. He takes four down to 14. Go ahead and play the Sun Chaser. Ah, uh, I guess we probably should have sent this guy, too. That was dumb. <laughs> that was dumb. I'm too hopped up. The Jets just won. I'm too excited. Oh. Right. I need to go. This. There we go. Interesting. Okay. So, again, I think... We've done a pretty good job here. We have a very... This is... Yeah, okay. <laughs> and he's just going to scoop it up. So that was a pretty sweet first game. That was basically what we're trying to do. We just get all of the... Um, Warriok Sun Chaser used to see play at Affinity, and it doesn't anymore just because there's just better threats. But yeah, that was a good job. Okay. So what do we want here against... We want the standard bears. That's why they're here. We want the cop green... Maybe even want the Prismatic Strands. What do we not want? Hmm. Probably don't want... We can probably cut on... Like the Ardent Recruits. I think they're just a little bit too slow here. Maybe even some of the Homunculuses. If you want to play some of these Prismatic Strands. Uh, the Strands actually don't seem that good. This thing becomes a 3-3. I think the Homunculus is just going to be better most of the time. Maybe we want to get our beats on a little bit faster. So we're going to cut the Thraben Inspectors. Okay, I think that's good. Yeah, I think just like that. I don't think Prismatic Trans is good enough because if he's like... He's still going to be able to block, and, and yeah, I just I don't like it that much. I think we have enough with the Sander Bears and the uh, the Cop Green, so. Alright, so maybe this game goes just as well as last game. That would be fantastic.
Alright, so this hand's pretty good. We have a standard bearer on turn two, which is basically what we want. We have a Mahungunkus on turn one. I'm gonna keep. So, as per usual, we'll lead off with the 1 1 homunculus. And ship. Okay, it's Utopia Sprawl. And a ledge walker, sure. So we're going to go ahead and play the Citadel. Get in there for two. And cast Spellskite. And we'll see what happens. He was pretty quick to concede in game one. We'll see how he is in game two. Next turn we have Springleaf Drum uh, into Oriok Sun Chaser if we want it, which is pretty good. He basically has to have a removal spell here. He might might have Journey. That's a good chance. Or he just has nothing, so that's good for us. Okay, there's a Porcelain Legionnaire. I only have the one artifact, but it's indestructible, so I'm just going to get in there for two. Then I'm going to start to, I guess, kind of get my flyers going a little bit better. Rex Sun Chaser with Metalcraft. It's a 3-3 three, three with flying and pass the turn. I'm definitely liking my spot here, that's for sure. Another ledge walker, yeah. Still no attacks, which is good for us. Ancient Den also good, keeps our metal craft count up. Two, three, four artifacts. Probably just want to run this thing out there. And then I'll also play this guy. This card's weird. One, two, three, four, five, six. Play Mirror Enforcer. And we'll get in there with these guys. And then next turn we can restock our hand with Squadron Hawk, which seems pretty good. It takes five down to eleven. Wow, we're just laying this deck's pretty cool. Obviously, we have the standard Baron. It's like busted against this deck, but yeah, he just scoops it up. So, what a ringing endorsement for Mono White Heroic right out of the gate, guys. We'll be back for round number two. All right, guys, so we're back here for round number two, playing uh, Mono White Affinity. And this end again is fairly decent. We're on the draw. Um, we have the Homunculus into, you know, if we draw any second land. We're in really good shape, so uh, I actually think this hand is, is quite decent. Our opponent mold to six. We're going to keep our hand. Five. Five. No, he kept six. Never lucky. I'm actually really liking this deck. We only played, you know, one record match, but I played a couple matches before this as well, and the deck did seem, you know, pretty decent. So what is our opponent on? Swamp. Okay. We really like a land here. Burn Forcer is not really a land. So if he's a black deck, I'm more inclined to lead off on Springleaf Drum. So the next turn I can go Court Homunculus plus Thraywood Inspector, and that's what I'm going to do. We'll just ship the turn. It's a nice land. It's a second land, sure. Well, didn't really matter all too much. We'll go ahead and play the Homunculus. And then go ahead and tap it for white. And play Thraven Inspector. 
so now we get two threats onto the board. He only has five cards in hand. Doesn't have a removal spell, so that's good. Plays a third land. Chitting rats here would be annoying. Duress. Sure. Probably... I assume the bone splitter's down? This duress art's so creepy. We also have um, four artifacts in play, too. So that's pretty important. If we draw like another artifact line, we can actually play more enforcer, so that's good. Just a regular land. That's all right. Okay, so I think we're going to play... What? One, two, three, four, five, and we can play Mer Enforcer plus Bone Splitter. One, two, three, four, five. I think. Hmm, this is an interesting. Interest. I think we want to play the Sun Chaser plus the Bone Splitter just to give us some evasion. Yeah, that seems much better. So that means I'm going to lead off by attacking. Put him down to 17, unless he wants to disfigure something. Does not. Okay. So play a Sun Chaser. Cast a Bone Splitter. And then we only have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five artifacts in play. So no Mirror Enforcer for us, but next turn we can play um, the Bone Splitter, Equip Bone Splitter, and play Mirror Enforcer possibly. So I'm liking our spot here. This deck seems to be quite good. Stinkweed Imp. Oh, that kind of wrecks our plans a little bit. Not that big of an issue. Court Homunculus is a pretty decent draw, actually. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to play the Court Homunculus, I think. Getting more pressure onto the board. We're going to go ahead and Bone Splitter here. That makes all of our threats lethal. Or, sorry, um, can all trade with the Stinkweed Imp, and then we're going to just attack with everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to play the Bone Splitter and the Mer Enforcer post-combat. Yeah, makes the most sense. Yeah, this deck really is explosive, and uh, I, I, I don't know if it's better than Affinity, but it seems like it's able to play this kind of mid-range game a little bit better. So he's going to get... The Snake Queen Imp is going to destroy the Oryx Salvagers. Or, sorry, Oryx Sun Chaser. We'll play out a Bone Splitter. And we'll play out a Mer Enforcer. Anytime I get to play Thurman Inspector, I'm going to be happy about it, so. <laughs> so, let's we'll see if he dredges back the Snake Queen Imp. Decides not to. So, we're kind of immune to Chittering Rats now. We actually have Lethal on board, so... Yeah, so he basically figured it out that he we had Lethal, and... Uh, Alright, so what do we want out of the sideboard here? We want Obsidian Acolyte for sure. We want Palace Sentinels for sure. Hmm. I don't think I want anything else. I think we're pretty well set up here. Uh... Maybe, like, I can cut two Bone Splitters. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, so we're here for game number two. We took game number one. Again, this hand seems fine. We have, like, the Springleaf Drum with the Bone Splitter. We can play Frogmite. Yeah, this hand has got to be fine on the draw. We also have a Palace Sentinels, which is going to be huge. As well as some threats. I actually, I'm really liking this deck right now. Thank you, Ryan, for this deck. This deck seems awesome. 
So our opponent is deciding whether or not he wants to mulligan the six. He's going to keep. I'm going to keep as well. So let's see. So he has the mountain. So it's probably we're playing against Reanimator. Yeah. Okay, we probably should have clued into that with the Duress. I guess and even the Stinkweed Imp, to be honest. So yeah, there's the Ulamox Crusher. So we're probably going to most likely get punished this game quite badly. <laughs> uh, so we'll just lead off on the Springleaf Drum again. If I had to guess, he's probably putting the, the Ulamox Crusher into play this turn. Yeah, I probably should have figured that out. Oh, so he did dredge the Stinkweed Imp. Okay. Ooh. Is this no second land? Okay, just Faith Sleeping. Sure. You'd think you'd want to do it first main phase in the off chance that you... I guess you could hit, like, Dragon's Breath Lotus Petal. I don't even know if they play Lotus Petal or not. Eternal Master's Faithless Wooding is a little unfortunate, though. You just can't find a second land? Devastator. Sure. There's the land. Sure. Gurmag Angler, probably. Looks to be Gurmag Angler. Well, that's a little more explosive than we're going to do. Not that much expo more explosive, but... Still pretty explosive. We don't have a lot of removal spells. So, this game's going to be tough. Yeah. Okay, we need a land here. Step one. It's not a land. Okay. So, we'll start with the homunculus. Two. I think we just play another homunculus. Yeah. I think that makes the most sense here. We really needed to land there, but that's okay. So hopefully our opponent isn't on much. But if he just puts the Ulmos Crusher into play, this game's basically over. Definitely take five here. Down to 15. Stinkweed? No, fa flashback, faithless living, sure. Hmm. Next turn we get Bone Splitter plus Frogmite equip attack for 6. That's if we don't draw land. Squadron Hawk, really not what we're looking for here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and play the Bone Splitter. We'll play Frogmite. The only thing we can really do here is put our opponent on the clock. And that's what we have to do. Get in there for six. Put him down to 14. And then pass. There is a world where we can make enough chump blockers for Ulamog's Crusher. I don't like that world. That's for sure. He does have Dragon Breath in the Graveyard too, which is not good. This looks like a flashback Faithless Suiting though. So all of this is like kind of good for us. He kind of just dirtles around, doesn't do anything. We have the ability to make a bunch of chump blockers and possibly be okay. It's going to be tight though. If he has something like another Gurmang Angler, that'll be tough. Yeah, that'll be worst case, another Gurmang Angler here. Five artifacts. Card Neonate and Ulamog's Crusher. So 
So this probably means he doesn't have an... Yeah, okay. So that's okay. Land? Okay, there's an artifact land, which is pretty much our best draw. One, two, three, four, five, six artifacts. So now I think we want to just play the Squadron Hawk. Hmm. You can play Squadron Hawk. Or yeah, Sun Chaser. Or Sun Chaser actually seems like the better card right now. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we tap it to play Murnforcer. Eight, thirteen. Yeah, that seems like the best play. Cast Murnforcer. Well, that's funny. You can put Dragon Breath on my guys. Okay. So the question here is whether or not I attack. So if I attack with everything, he blocks the 4-2, goes to takes 4, goes to 10. Next turn, I have 5 in the air for sure, plus 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's tight. Hmm. The alternative is I wait for him to just do something. So I'm actually going to attack with everything. This might be completely wrong, but I need to put pressure on him. He's a 10, we're at 15. We kind of got to hope he does nothing. Didn't dredge stink weed imp. Alright, Faithless Looting. That is a powerful magic card. Hmm. So next turn. Just trying to, at this point, just fade the Ulamog's Crusher. He has a 10. We have a lot of power. What did he discard? Lightning Axe and Insolent Neonate. There's a Stinkweed Imp. Again, so this is... Still good for us. Or not good, but it's... It's something for us. Ancient Den. Okay, so here... We can play Palace Sentinels. Or Squadron Hawk. Hmm. Maybe... Uh, this is a tough, tough call. Hmm. Maybe I kind of just have to build up my board. So if I attack with Orox Chasers, he just blocks it. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play the Sentinels. Tap uh, the Homunculus. So I'm now the Monarch. No attacks. Get to draw a card. Porcelain Legionnaire, sure. I'll block Stinkweed Imp for sure. And I'll double block the Gurmag Angler. Yeah. Faithless Looting again. It's a lot of cards you see in this game. Discard a Gurmang or Dragon Breath. That can only mean that he's giving us the Ulamog Crusher this turn. We have some stuff to sacrifice, so... Okay, so no attacks, though. Okay, well... Hmm. All right. So now, what do I want to do now? I think I put the Bone Splitter on the Mirror Enforcer and attack. I think. Hmm. And I can play two Squadron Hawks or a Porcelain Legionnaire. I'm going to play Squadron Hawk Porcelain Legionnaire. 
So maybe I just want to keep building my board. Yeah, that seems better. Play Squadron Hawk. Then play another spring leaf drum just so I have as much sacrifice fodder as possible. Tap it for a white. Tap the squadron hawk. Tap it for a white. Tap this frog mite. And play porcelain legionnaire. The good thing about porcelain legionnaire is going to be able to start attacking through his guys. And then they have first strike, so here there's just no good attack, I don't think. But I do get to draw a card. There's a flare husk, which is good. It's a land. Pal Palace Sentinels maybe wasn't the best card, but it's certainly doing work in this game. So we have a decent amount of, of force here, and this deck is pretty resilient. We were on one land and not a lot of stuff for a long time, and have really turned this into a game. We also get Court Homunculus back if uh, if he exhumes, which is sweet. <laughs> it's definitely not uh, the worst thing ever. Surprised why he discard, discarded the Skirmit Angler. That had to have meant that we were in rough shape. Same with the Lightning Axe. Like, there's a lot of good cards he's discarded. I'm very interested to see what he... Smash. Okay. Sure. Can't even Imtomb now. Well, that seems incorrect. I'm going to get back the Murdforcer. A lot of Dragon Breath triggers. So the Crusher will get haste, yeah. No cards in hand. Gets in there with the Crusher. So I'll sacrifice Springleaf Drum, Springleaf Drum. I'm going to block with the Enforcer. The Homunculus and the Palace Sentinels. So he gets to eat probably the Palace Sentinels and the Mernforcer. But again, I'm really far up in cards now. This Porcelain Legionnaire... He can fire breathe it once up to nine. Still not enough to destroy all my creatures, so. So now I'm going to start to get aggro with the Squadron Hawks. So we left the Homunculus. Yep, makes sense. Planes is good. Alright, so I'm going to start to get aggro with my with my flyers. So I'm going to equip here. I'm going to go to attack. This is an attack for six. He's going to take three down to seven. Then I'm going to play another squadron hawk. And then equip the bone splitter to it. Or, sorry, to the Porcelain Legionnaire. This guy. Oh, no. And then equip this over here, so he has no good attacks. And then ship the turn, drawing another card. No, Frogmite, I could have cast it. <laughs> so we have a 5-1 first strike. I don't think he can afford to dredge a Stinkweed Imp. So it's looking pretty grim for him now. 
the Monarch really, and yeah, there it is, guys. So we were able to kind of grind out this combo deck. This deck has really surprised me so far. I'm really happy with how good this Mono White and Affinity deck has looked. We're back for our number three, trying to get that, trying to get that 3-0. All right, guys, so we're here for our number three. Unfortunately, um, my recording got lost for this match, but I thought it was interesting enough that uh, I would go back and, and show it as a recording. So turn one, we play a Flare Husk. He plays Saltwater Cliffs into Urza's Mine. He is obviously on Tron. Uh, he follows that up with a turn two Prismatic Prism. We have Dark Zone Citadel into Springleaf Drum and a Oriox Sun Chaser. He untaps and casts a Seagate Oracle. I'm actually feeling pretty good about myself right here as we have the Bone Splitter plus uh, Porcelain Legionnaire here. Or sorry, uh, we actually play Squadron Hawk here. So he gets down to 16. We end up playing the Squadron Hawk. We get three more Squadron Hawks. And right now, like, he's pretty far away from Tron. He impulses. Uh, but we have a pretty good Air Force built up right now. Play a Planes. We go actually go ahead and equip the Air Husk onto the Squadron Hawk. We attack. He uh, has the Doom Blade for the um, Oriok Sun Chaser. But then we go ahead and and create what uh, is pr a pretty decent army here, as we have all these flyers. He Forbidden Alchemies. Attacks for one, we go to 19. We untap, we get in for five. And then we're able to d dispense our entire hand. Squadron Hawk gets nothing. Squadron Hawk gets nothing. And then we play Portion Legionnaire. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. Like, I have one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven power. He's at nine life. I'm feeling pretty good. We have to put a pressure on. We have to put pressure on this deck. And then he goes ahead and does this. So he deals one damage to each creature he does not control with Electricery, which is able to destroy Squadron Hawk and Squadron Hawk and Squadron Hawk and Squadron Hawk and Porcelain Legionnaire. The old I guess four, five for two, because he needs the Flame Slash to finish off the Squadron Hawk with the bone, with the, with the Flare Husk on it. But, um, yeah. It was not good. Uh, we, uh, he ends up getting another prof Prophetic Prism. Attacks us for one. We draw Bone Splitter and concede the game. <laughs> four cards in hand. This game was essentially over. All right, so for game number two, we end up having to mull down to five cards. We keep, um... Kind of a slow hand, but it has some explosiveness to it, depending on what we draw. He has Urza's Tower. We end up uh, Springleaf Drum into attack for one. He has a Prophetic Prism. We untap. We're able to cast the Porcelain Legionnaire. Trying to get as much pressure on the board as we can. He has a Seagate Oracle. We untap. We Bone Splitter up the Porcelain Legionnaire, and he blocks... And then we play Frogmite and pass. He then plays another Seagate Oracle. And it's with Watercliffs back up to 20. We go ahead and get in there for 7. He takes it. And then we play Thraven Inspector and a Bone Splitter. On his turn, he taps out, f or he taps 4 mana and casts Thorner Dignitary, which is 3 and a white for a 1 4. And when he enters the battlefield, target opponent skips their next combat step. So, not great for us in our mono white no removal deck. Untap, we cast an Oriox on Chaser, and hopefully we don't just die, but uh, on the end of his turn, he Mystical Teachings for Ghostly Flicker, which is always bad, because he's just going to be able to start flickering the Stoneheart Dignitary. But, worst case scenario happens, he casts a Serrated Arrows into another Stoneheart Dignitary. So now, we've basically been locked out of the game. He has to brick for basically a three or four turns here. Uh, we draw a, a, an Ancient Den, we crack our clue, draw another land, and figure that it was time to pack it in. We actually have no removal spells in our entire deck. We're more of a just kind of race and, and, and evasion type deck. And unfortunately, the Stonehorn Dignitary Lock got us, and um, we went 2-1. So we're going to talk about it in the conclusion right away. I still think this deck is very sweet. Well, guys, we weren't able to complete the 3-0 Dream, but 2-1 is pretty damn good for this deck. And I actually think this deck is something that I can see myself playing... Possibly on my stream tomorrow night. I really, really like it. If you like this deck as well, please let me know down in the comments. Again, you're trying to win this um, Invocation Counterspell. So if you want this Invocation Counterspell, make sure you tell me down in the comments. I don't know where it is. I lost it. No, I didn't. I'll find it. Um, anyways, if you like this deck, make sure you tell down in the comments. Again, uh, I will be streaming tomorrow night and Sunday night. So for the next couple of weeks, just to see how it goes, 7 p.m. till probably like 9.30, 10 
this Friday, that's Central Time, 7 to 10, and on Sunday, 7 to 10. So make sure you check that out. Link is down at the bottom there, www.twitch.tv slash popperponderings. So I look forward to that. Maybe you'll be playing some Mono White Affinity or Tempered Seal, as I like to call it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you hopefully in the live stream tomorrow night. Thank you.